So I have now gained 36.2 pounds in the last 40 days. So uh, I thought I'd start uh, this week's episode off with a little post-show rebound update. Um, Because I'm super stoked about this. And uh, yeah, I know you might be thinking like, how is this even possible? I'm just as shocked as you are, honestly. This is my first post-show rebound. Uh, Obviously, I'm very happy with how this is going. Um, And there's like a lot of kind of cool things about this that I'll I'll share in a second here. Um, But yeah, just to run through the progress photos and the progress that I've made in the last 40 days. So again, this is show day. You can, you can tell because I got the, the tan on and stuff and I'm super sucked down. So I was 188 pounds that morning. Uh, today, I am 224.2 pounds. Uh, so almost one pound per day in the last 40 days, which is crazy. As you can see, very, very little of it is body fat. Uh, you can definitely start to see some body fat accumulating now. I look softer. There's less lines, etc. But that like... That's fine. That obviously, like that's complete. I'll completely accept that at this point. Um, So yeah, uh, one week after uh, show day, basically here, I was up already uh, six point four pounds, and then another almost ten pounds in the next seven days, Um, and then another like that's roughly eight pounds in the next five days. Uh, And then I skipped 10 days. So 215.2. So this is like 14.2 pounds of gain uh, by July 1st. And then today, 224.2. So there was points. doesn't really look like it, but there, yeah, this 10 days here was things obviously slowed down. So only, only 4.2 pounds in 10 days here. Um, But then things over the last uh, 10 days have really picked up again. So yeah, we're still in the rebound. I don't know how much longer this is going to last, but hopefully as long as possible. Um, And then the really, really cool thing about this is like, like I am starting to experience some of like the sort of negative side effects of, of pushing your body weight up, being heavy the off season. But the cool thing about this um, is, you know, when you compare um, my body weight with what my body weight was at, the, the same body weight last off season, uh, last off season, I went from 160 to 232 pounds was my peak off season weight. So one really cool thing about being where I'm at now is, uh, I'm already only 40 days after my show and very early in my off season only, uh, I think that's literally exactly eight pounds away from last year's peak off season weight. So that is super awesome, uh, and I look way, way leaner. So as you can see, compared to roughly the same weight last year in my offseason, uh, I look way better, um, which is awesome. And I also, th- this, is, this is my favorite part, because at this point in time, and it was probably between about late May all the way through till you know, a a few weeks into prep. So like February. So for a good, like eight months, I just felt so lethargic, um, heavy. Uh, I was, it it was really hard for me to get my meals down, et cetera. And I was like, man, this better not, this better just be because this is my first off season and I've had to gain so much weight. My body's not used to this because like this sucks. Um, which is one of the awesome things about bodybuilding, right? Is like, it's hard. (laughs) And you have to, and you're doing it to yourself and you have to stay consistent with it. So I was praying that at uh, this off season, I would not feel as lethargic. Now, of course, I'll probably get to that point, but it'll be at a much heavier body weight, of course, because yeah, today uh, at a little bit heavier than I was feeling like absolute crap, looking pretty shitty. Last off season, I feel much better. Uh, I am starting to feel some of the the side effects of being in the off season, but nowhere near even close to how terrible I felt um, last year at roughly the same weight. So super cool. Like when I say, I I know this, it it, it seems unbelievable that someone can gain this much muscle in such a short period of time. And trust me when I say I'm just as shocked as you are, but yeah, going super awesome. 
So I just wanted to start this week's episode off with sharing that, keeping you guys updated on this. Um, so, and then I, I, I did get my meal plan adjusted this week. So I will show some of those adjustments and then we're going to do my push B day. All right. So yeah, like I said, uh, my meal plan got changed this week a little bit. Uh, so I'm eating more protein now. So this is one of the very rare occurrences that my protein has gone up. Um, cause I'm just a lot more muscular than I, I have been now. So that'll probably be a change that just stays in place. So you don't have to change protein super often, but anyway, for that reason, uh, and the reason that I'm eating a lot more food in general, uh, I go through my meal prep a lot quicker. So this morning I'm cooking a lot of stuff. Uh, th these chicken breasts just came out of the oven. I don't know if you can see this very well, but yes, I put no seasoning on them now when I cook it because I put enough sauce and stuff like that on before I eat my meals that it literally doesn't make difference if I put make a difference if I put uh, salt and pepper on it before I cook it. But yeah, so I'm chopping up all these chicken breasts. Now that I have to cook so frequently, um, I'm doing my chicken in the oven again because it can just I can do twice as much in the oven as I can do in the air fryer and I have to use the air fryer for other things. So like right now I have my potatoes in there and then as soon as those potatoes are done, which is in like four minutes, um, I'm gonna cook up my shrimp, which the shrimp has been super annoying because uh, I just get frozen shrimp and you can either get it um, raw or like pre-cooked uh, and when, it, when you get it pre-cooked, like you can use it as is right out of the bag for like salads or whatever, or you can also like recook it, of course. Um, but when I use the raw shrimp, there's only so much I can put in my air fryer. And if I put too much, it's just like really undercooked and to the point where it's not, <laughs> not safe to eat. So I bought the pre-cooked stuff this time. So We'll see how much of that I can do. Obviously, if it doesn't fully cook, it doesn't matter because it's already pre-cooked. So I'm already trying to adjust the way that I meal prep now to make it so, you know, I'm not just constantly cooking all day, which has sort of been the case for the last few days. So, um, so yeah, like I said, I'm going to finish chopping up these chicken breasts. By the way, this is so worth it to do. Um, like all at once, chop up all of your chicken. I just hate when I eat my meals having to use like a fork and knife. I'd rather just, especially when you're eating a lot of food, it's better just to have it pre cut up and so you can just take a spoon and go ham and not have to worry about cutting it up. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna finish chopping these up. Potatoes are about to be done. Then I'm gonna do the shrimp, see how much I can do. Uh, then my, I've already eaten my first meal, which hasn't changed. So no need to share that. Uh, but there is, there was a really awesome, small, but very, uh, welcome adjustment made to my pre-workout meal. So I'll show you guys what that is. And then, yeah, then we'll head to the gym for push day B. So the changes that my coach has made to my meal planner, actually quite interesting. Like, he really, I hate the word optimize, but I don't really know what else, what other word to use. He's really optimizing my nutrient timing. So one of the things he's done is um, in, on my base diet plan days, so that's rest. So both days that are not my high days for my back days, my high carb days, he's really increased my protein. So before uh, my meals with chicken were 170 grams of chicken and my meals with shrimp were 190. And now he's increased my meals with chicken to 200 grams per serve, uh, 200 gram servings of chicken and 280 gram servings of shrimp. So I'm going through shrimp and chicken a lot faster now. So the potatoes are done now. I already got them in the container in the fridge. So before I was doing like roughly maybe one, one of these bags and that was like about as much as the air fryer would fully cook. So these are pre-cooked shrimp. So I'm not as concerned about them being like fully cooked because they're, they're already cooked. So, I mean, I'm going to cook them the same way 
but I'm gonna cook a lot more. So match cook, so I'll preheat the air fryer. So, so instead of doing like one bag of these, I'm gonna try to do three because lately I've been having to cook shrimp every single day. Well, at least for the first couple days on this new meal plan with much more, much higher protein. So, so yeah, I'm gonna toss these in and see how long uh, this much more shrimp lasts if I can get this bag open. All right, so like I said, diet was updated. My first meal was not updated, um, but my pre-workout meal, which I have here right now, has been updated. So it's still the same as before. Um, 120 grams of cream of rice. I use Elevate because it's the best by far. Mix of uh, chocolate cake and cookie butter. Uh, and then I have um, chocolate peanut butter Pro HD in here as well. And then I put cinnamon and uh, sugar-free maple syrup in there. Now, here is the update. With this meal now, I get to have not one, but two Rice Krispie treats. So of course, the way that I eat these, because how could you resist doing this? Is obviously I'm gonna dip the Rice Krispie treat in the cream of rice. Mmm. Amazing. So yeah, like I said, the, the changes that my coach made to my diet are pretty interesting. Um, like nutrient timing wise, so worth talking about. I'll just explain it. So basically like I have a base diet day, right? Which is, um, it's the same diet for both my training days and rest days. But then for my back training days, I have a high carb day, which I covered in the first episode. That's not changing, but my base diet did change. So um, we added these Rice Krispie treats, so more carbs increased my protein by quite a bit. Um, and then on my training days now, uh, I only have added fat before bed and that got increased a bit as well. Uh, and then I eat, I have the rice, I have two meals that have 300 grams of rice. On my rest days, the only difference is it's the same diet and there's just notes on it. So on my rest days, I do not consume the rice and I consume uh, added fats in the form of 30 grams of almond butter for two of my meals. So meals four and five. So meals four, five, and six have fat on my rest days, right? On my training days, and then I, I don't consume the rice on those rest days in meal uh, four, five, or six. On my training days, uh, I consume the rice in meals four and five, but I don't have the added fat and I only have the added fat before bed. Because again, like I've explained in the last few episodes, on training days, you want your body to, uh, to you, you want to have more room to digest your carbs. Fat slows down your digestion. Um, and obviously you don't want as many calories on, I guess, you know, calories are probably a little bit higher on rest days because of the fat, maybe. I mean, I'd have to look, but from a, a nutrient timing perspective, that's a little more optimal. You have your biggest serving of fat before bed, so that helps slow your digestion down, which you want before bed, because that's when you're going the longest period of time fasted. So that will allow for more of a steady release of like the amino acids from the protein that you consume with that meal. Um, and then, yeah, you want you want more room for, for digestion for to digest your carbohydrates and protein on your training days. Uh, you're not using the carbs on your non-training days, so that's why we're removing the rice. Um, and then kind of like loading up on the fat on on the, the, the rest days because we don't need our digestion to be quick those days, right? So yeah, that's essentially the changes that were made. So um, it's definitely been interesting to see some of the changes the coach has been making to the plan. By the way, this stuff is not super important. Uh, it does make a difference, but like if you... If you can't follow a meal plan where it's just the same thing every day, this isn't going to make any difference trying to like play with your nutrient timing because you're not doing the main thing, which is hitting your calorie and macronutrient targets. So the question is, how the fuck do you gain 40 pounds 
mostly of muscle in 40 days. I know it's like 36.2 pounds or whatever. Um, people are like, people are asking me this, obviously. A lot of people on social media are getting like pissed off and telling me I'm full of shit. <laughs> I don't know why I would lie about that. But um, there's a lot of things that, there's a lot of like factors that people don't really fully understand or know about when it comes to a post-show rebound that make that possible, right? So first of all, last year I did a long off season where I pushed my body weight up to about, uh, you know, 225 pounds. And then I maintained that I reached a peak of 232.2. I think it was in January. So six months before the show. Um, so that was 14 months of me gaining. Um, and then a lot of, uh, a lot of that 14 months, actually I wasn't gaining. I was just maintaining that high body weight, letting my body kind of settle into it. Right. So what that does is that creates kind of like a set point, right? So a place your body, uh, a body weight, your body is used to holding on to an amount of muscle. Your body gets used to holding on to once you have, um, locked in one of these set points, you can get back to it much easier, right? And it has to do with like muscle memory, etc. So I started my prep at 232 pounds in January. And 20 weeks later, I was 188 pounds. So that's, I lost a lot of weight very fast. Um, and then, but when you are show lean, when you're stage lean, you're peeled, your muscles are already also very depleted. And that's another factor that people don't understand. Um, we've all heard that our bodies are 75% fluid or water, whatever you want to say. Um, but then when it comes to building muscle and losing fat and, you know, talking about it from the perspective of of fitness and body recomposition, people seem to forget that. And people seem to think that body weight gain and loss is always just either muscle or fat tissue. No, right. When, when I lose, when I lost uh, whatever it was to get 232 to 188, I think that's like 46 pounds or something. The 46 pounds I lost to get stage shredded and peeled, it was a lot of fluid, right? a lot of intramuscular fluid you can really see especially um between like the three uh three day out mark and show day that you really start to get kind of sucked down and it almost looks like you're losing muscle because in a sense uh you are losing muscle i did lose muscle because again muscle is not just your muscle is not just made up of muscle tissue there's also fluid inside the muscle right so when you deplete, that's what's happening is you're, de you're depleting uh, fluid, glycogen, et cetera, whatever other fluid uh, from your muscles. Okay, so when I, start, when I started the post-show rebound, I have, you know, who, who knows? I, I, I have no idea really, but I'm gaining a significant amount of that fluid back that is getting stored into my muscles, all right? So that's, that's one part of it. So a lot of the body weight is just, is just water, intramuscular fluid, right? So that makes the muscle look bigger. It doesn't make you look fat, a uh, flat, and, uh, doesn't make you look fat and fluffy and watery because it's in the muscle. It's not between the muscle and the skin. Okay. So no, the, the 36 pounds of, of weight that I've gained over the last 40 days is not all muscle tissue. Okay. Although it is a lot of muscle and that's where, uh, the magic of the rebound, um, th that's where that conversation starts. Look, oh, my tripod just came off the window. There we go. Um, so the other thing is when you are peeled and you're like, you know, five to 7% body fat, that makes it so your muscle insulin sensitivity is very high. So what, what does insulin do? When you get insulin, uh, when, when insulin is high, you know, that, that means that your body 
uh, your body's tissue is, is prepared, that insulin is prepared to, to use, utilize that glucose, right? Your, your blood glucose. So insulin can be in fat tissue. If you have body fat and muscle, it's gonna, the insulin is gonna pull glucose into the fat tissue and into the muscle tissue. So what happens when you have barely any body fat um, and a lot of muscle? Well, your muscle insulin sensitivity is very high. And as long as you're very careful with the diet, you do a slow reverse diet, a lot of the, most of the food that you consume that's in surplus is going to go toward uh, your muscle, right? So that's how it's possible, okay? That's, I'm pretty sure I kind of covered everything there. Um, but yeah, believe me, I, I was not expecting it to be as, like, I wasn't expecting to gain as much weight as I have while staying this lean. Obviously, I'm insanely happy with it. Um, but uh, yeah, also like, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been training, I've been dieting for a long time. I am on point with everything. Uh, so there's 11 years of experience that are also supporting the, the success of me following this rebound plan that my coach has laid out for me. So, so yeah, I'm super happy with it. Uh, hopefully that cleared things up. People who want to get mad and say I'm lying, there's nothing I could say to change their mind. They just, people love having something to bitch about. So uh, if that thing is me, awesome, it's free marketing. Okay, push day B. So I am starting, I start my push day B with the exact same exercise that I start push day A on. Why? Honestly, I don't know, nothing, nothing beats this machine in my program right now for my upper chest. So I don't know, why not do this machine first on both of my push days? My other two exercises are different. Uh, but yeah, I just don't see any reason why it has to be a different exercise to start. I just, I love this machine so much so that I'm just gonna start both of my push days with it. So uh, just doing my warm up sets. So one plate, I've progressed a lot on this. I'll go over that in a sec. So again, how I warm up 10 reps with about roughly half the, the working set weight I'll be using. Yeah, so we're progressing super fast on this machine, which is another, which is actually a reason, an argument for doing the same exercise twice in a week is you at least have, you have the potential to progress a lot quicker. So, I mean, I started this exercise at 180 pounds, uh, 100, yeah, 180 pounds for seven reps, six and six. Last week, I did 205 for 10, 9, and 8. Um, now, obviously, that's starting out purposely leaving a lot on the table. Um, but last week, the progression was basically, um, let's see here. I basically went up, I went up 10 pounds and gained a rep on all three sets last week. So, so this week, I... I'm increasing by 10 pounds again. So we're at 215. So goal is just to, to beat reps from last week. So do one, I'm gonna do one warm up set with my working set weight. Feels good. So one thing with uh, your chest pressing in this machine specifically is uh, like, as you can see, the way this machine converges, your kind of like grip, your hands are, they, they get further apart from each other. So this machine like it gives you a, a really deep stretch across your chest, like a, a deeper stretch across my, my upper chest than anything else that I've ever experienced. Now at the top, it does kind of converge a little bit too close inward the higher, the higher I go. So what you're going to notice is I stop a little bit before I get to full lockout, which 
is actually like a good way to do almost any chest pressing exercise because when you're fully locked out, you lose a lot of the tension across your chest. So good thing to keep in mind if you're trying to build muscle that is and you're not, you don't need the break that lockout provides you so you can lift more weight. Um, I'll adjust my camera here so you can see too how far I'm stopping. Just point it a little low. All right, set number one. I'm trying to beat 10. sick so I did uh yeah 10 more pounds one more rep so double progression so yeah again uh doing the same exercise twice in a week or a, a program micro cycle I guess it's my, my program's not a week long week long micro cycles uh it gives you like you'll, I'll progress faster and I have been but I'll probably hit a wall faster, progressing with weight and reps. The sweet thing about this machine is you can, as like a drop set feature, which uh, basically, uh, I mean, I can film myself using it later, but, or, or another, when I start using it, but basically if I begin to stall when it comes to rep or load progression, then I can throw in drop sets with this machine. So this is a good machine to choose for twice a week training as well. All right, so I'll go for a double progression again for set two. That means I gotta hit 10. good way to describe the reps that count the sticky ones sticky ones that really slow down and I'm sure when I watch these back as I edit it as I edit the video it'll be clear that I had one or two more all right so exercise number two is uh, seated cable fly so if you didn't watch uh, my last push day like every exercise I'm doing for chest I'm emphasizing upper chest. So on this, I have the seat as low as it goes. Um, so my grips as high as possible. And the, the plane that I'm flying on is still horizontal, but because the seat's low, my, uh, my arms are high. Like I'm still targeting mostly upper chest, a little bit of like twist in my uh, arms like this too. And that helps, that helps target the upper chest. Um, but yeah, so let's see. See, I like doing these higher rep. Um, so my, my rep range is 12 to 18. Last week I did 16 to 61, and then 13 I, I dropped down to 55. Not sure why I did that, but I'm gonna try to do both sets with 61. So trying to beat 60 on the first set here. Now, the benefit of fly, well, basically every chest exercise I do. I'm trying to emphasize the stretch, but. We got 17, same weight as last week, no double progression. So remember, it's always harder to progress and your progression is gonna be slower on isolation exercises where the load is less. Think of it in terms of percentage, right? If, if you can add 10 pounds to a 200 pound lift, that's 5%. So you're not gonna be able to add 10 pounds to a 50 pound lift, right? Sounds stupid common sense, but a lot of people get, a lot of people get, uh, cause they hear people say add five pounds a week. Well, it depends on the lift. It makes more sense to say 
you know, add two to 5% per week for load. So yeah, just two sets on this one. Um, I still have no idea why. I can't think of why I dropped the weight and did significantly less reps last week, but I guess we'll find out here. Or maybe we'll, maybe we'll never find out. I'm hoping that's the, that's the answer. Okay, so 15. So yeah, I, I didn't really have to try to beat anything because I did more weight and I knew I'd get more than 13. But uh, it, did, it did occur to me why I did this. So I, my rep range, I originally had it set for 10 to 15. So because I exceeded my rep range last week, um, I just decided to increase it. I'm cool with doing more on the flies. Feels good to do higher rep flies. So yeah, that's it for the flies. Okay, so third and final uh, chest exercise for our push B-Day is uh, low, inc low incline dumbbell press. So on the other push day, I have a high incline Smith machine press. So this is like kind of two opposite in two ways. It's free weights instead of a machine, a low incline instead of a high incline. So a little variation there. Yeah, last week I did, last week I did uh, 80 pound dumbbells for seven, seven and six. So because those first two sets, I got the same amount of reps. Um, I'm gonna go up and wait this week. Uh, now, it's tough, it's tough to progress with dumbbells because that's a pretty big jump. Like five pounds per side is a pretty big jump when you're going from 80 to 85. I mean, just to, just to like kind of uh, give you a visual on this, like that's 160 pounds between the two um, divided by, or sorry, 10 divided by 160. I mean, so yeah, it's not too bad. It's a 6.25% increase. Oh, well, that is a lot. Like what, what you'll likely see happen over time and what you should be happy with if you average it out is about two to 3% per week strength gain um, on average when it comes to load. So to, to uh, re-emphasize my point from earlier, let's say you're doing dumbbell lateral raises with 15 pounds. So what's 2% what's of that? 0 0.02 times 15, 0 0.3. So you can't add 0.3 pounds to a dumbbell, right? So that's why it's uh, it's kind of silly. It's kind of silly to to take the advice. You should be adding five pounds to the bar per week. It's just super general, and it applies to only really your heavier lifts. And for some of your even heavier, all right. So my memory card died in the middle of my rant there. I don't know where I was, so I'm just gonna get on with the set. <laughs> so I did 80, 80 for seven, seven and six last week. So I'm gonna do 85 this week. It's a pretty big jump, so I might not actually be able to even match my reps, but we'll see. I'll still aim to, to double progress. Okay, well, that's a surprise. Not only did I beat the reps, but I beat them by two. <laughs> a lot of that could be because I just took a long rest going and grabbing a new memory card. I'll take it. That's good though, because otherwise I maybe would have had to do a back offset, which is annoying because I gotta, especially with dumbbells, because you gotta switch your dumbbells. And we'll see to you because this might affect the subsequent sets as well, like I did. 
my rep range is six to 12. So I did 80s for seven and six. So even if I match those, I'll be happy. All right, so I forgot to film set two, but I ended up hitting the double progression by one rep. So now we need seven for a double progression on all three sets. Nice. All right, so that's cool. Lots of uh, strength gains across the board this week in this session. All right, so this is my favorite variation of face pulls. I've been fo I've fooled around a lot before I settled on these because like your regular standing face pulls are just so annoying because like once you get to a certain weight, it's really hard to prevent your your pre prevent yourself from like using your body weight and leaning into it and kind of swinging with each rep. So something where you can stabilize the rest of your body is gonna be a lot better, obviously. I also prefer to pull over my head. So this way also facilitates that. So really simple, bas basically what we're doing, you can use just normal tricep rope attachment for this, basically. I, I have my own thing that I buy. You can get these on Amazon, they're like 35 bucks. So I'm getting into the lat pull down machine and I'm really, like I have my legs kind of out like this and you can, I don't know, find a comfortable spot for them. I like to put them up against the bars here, if you can see that. Um, doesn't look like you can, but whatever. So I'm leaned pretty far back. And then I'm face pulling to like above my head. So you'll see just how kind of, like this even looks 10 times better. <clears throat> Yeah, so that feels awesome. This is not necessarily like an exercise that we're trying to progress on. Cause again, like it's an isolation exercise. So I, like rear delts, just like I do this, just like I do all of my other rear delt exercises where I just try to match the load and the reps set to set. So that forces you to kind of have to really make your last few reps forced sort of partials. Um, and this exercise is actually great for, for doing partial reps that really emphasize the, the stretch. So you'll see that. Also, this is another exercise that I do, uh, I have twice in my split. Although there is like another cable machine here that has, uh, it's, like, it's like a row that allows you to like lie down because it has foot pedals that are up high. You'll, you'll see it when I get to that day in my split. But I'm basically doing this twice, but just two slightly different variations. Again, it's just, it's an exercise that I'm connecting so well with right now, so why not do it twice? Okay, second set. So yeah, every, all four of these sets I'm just doing, I'm going for 16, so there should be more forced partial reps at the end of the set. <sighs> So last rep or two is a partial, not bad. So basically like if I do, I will eventually progress on this. Could be in two weeks, could be in two months, but what will, what will tell me I'm ready to progress is if I can do all four of these sets for the same amount of reps without having to force out partial reps in my you know second, third, fourth sets. So you're kind of letting, you're setting up checks and balances if that's the right term for it. Uh, targets to hit before you progress, right? Okay, set number three. 
So these are more like pump exercises. You're more focused on getting as much blood, lactic acid, metabolic waste into the muscle as you can. Because the end it should feel almost like a sensation like when you get a brain freeze and you kind of have to like cringe while you wait for the, the brain freeze to clear. Except for a lot, a lot more enjoyable if you're sick like me. All right, so this is my like heavy loading lateral raise variation. Um, so I am kind of progressing on these. Last week I did, I was using 32.5 pound dumbbells, uh, 16 reps, same thing with, I'm doing with basically all my lateral and rear delt raises, flies, whatever, uh, the, the, the 16 rep thing. I don't know why I like that. It feels good, feels right. So anyway, this is like a sloppier, more clang and bang style lift I have in here for my side delt. So a little bit of swinging. Still, you'll see though, still pretty controlled. Yeah, so fairly easy. So I'm just gonna keep the rest a little shorter. So Next set, it's a struggle to hit 16 again. I also have a super set lined up for this one, so I'm not gonna add that in yet. But I do have uh, an exercise, a, a side lateral exercise that I'll add before this eventually. So same idea as with the drop sets on the, the incline press machine I was talking about earlier. Once I do reach a point where the progression gets sticky, um, which, you know, is going to happen sooner or later with these. Uh, then I'll add in the, the superset. So something before to make this exercise kind of more challenging. <clears throat> All right, yeah, so with a little kind of shorter Rest period between sets there, that was definitely harder. So I know like a lot of people really struggle with lateral raises. Um, so like a few, few like cues is, and these are things that really helped me because I struggled with these as well early on. Um, number one, like when you do the raise, lead with your elbow. So your, your wrist should always be a little bit below your elbow. If your wrist is going above your elbow, you don't, you don't want that, right? So. A good cue for that is pretend like the dumbbell is a bottle of water that you're holding. The cap is here and you want the water to be pouring out of the dumbbell the whole time. So you have a little bit of pronation in your grip, right? You're letting the dumbbells kind of hang and it could help if you grip the dumbbells. You can see this kind of more with your pinky. So on this end, because that will help facilitate that pronation, right? Secondly, um, keep your hands like slightly in front of you. You don't wanna have to pull back like this. Um, also like engage your scapula and your lats a bit. So you kinda of wanna puff your chest out, retract your scapula back, uh, keep your lats kind of like fired a little bit. And then that way it just, it just keeps your, your uh, your scapula in a fixed position, so it's mostly just your your lateral delts contracting, right? Which is what you want. Okay, so obviously, like this is a this is me doing it dirty, but hopefully you can kind of see you can see all those cues in play while I do my set. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Yeah, so now they're getting dirtier. So second last set, one more to go. All right, so I figured this is a good opportunity to do a, a back off set. That last set was pretty filthy, so it felt, it felt good, but uh, there's a lot of swinging. So I'm just gonna go down to 30s, 
should be able to control these a lot better. Oh, yeah, that was good. All right, so now we're doing probably my favorite tricep exercise, which is just a single, single arm tricep extension. I like to use a cuff for this, and I kind of false grip it. And then I set up so uh, I'm pulling across my body. And then I do these very, very slow because I, I want to keep tension across my tricep the entire time. So you get a real nice, good full contraction, nice and hard. And then I'm going until my elbow can't bend anymore. And I feel a full stretch across my tricep. So. so yeah, go till, go till it doesn't move anymore. So good. So I actually had a guy, I posted these on Instagram. I had some guy say, that's too much, man. You're basically sleeping because I do them so slow. But in reality, it's the opposite. Because like, like intensity doesn't just mean you're fucking throwing weight around like a, gor like a gorilla with rabies. <laughs> that's a good analogy. Intensity could mean like there's a lot of mental focus going into making sure I got a shitload of tension across my tricep when I do these. So that's the opposite of like being sleepy. It looks slow, but you know, what, what builds muscle? Tension. All right, second set. So I like to go for 16 on these. I don't do the same thing that I do with uh, side and rear delts though. So we'll, I'll just get as many as I can here. So I did use some partials there to hit 16. So I'll probably next week I'll add a little more weight. So finishing up with abs, doing a decline crunch. Um, I do use weight for these. So I have a 10 pound plate I'm gonna hold, which you'll see. Um, I did 16, 14 and 12 last week. Yeah. So I'm gonna go until my first set gets to 20 before I increase the weight. Um, it'll be kind of tricky because I'll have to go yeah, I'll have to go up to 15. So that should drop the amount of reps I'm able to do down quite a bit. Now, really important with any ab exercise, you're not just crunching like this. You wanna get a good stretch on your abs too. So you should have your arms up like this that helps facilitate it. And even just the way you breathe, you, you, could, you could practice this like before you start your set just feel a good stretch across your abs. So you want every rep to include like that nice deep stretch. So you'll see me emphasize it. Hopefully it's visible on each rep. So going for 16 or more here. Oh. 
another thing you should notice too is how slow my eccentric is. Which, again, that applies to every exercise, but you skip the eccentric, you let momentum and gravity do the work for you, you're missing out on the one of or the most effective parts of the exercise. Okay, I've just got to be at 14 here. long time since I've done weighted core exercises, but man, this it beat the hell out of me. So yeah, 15 there. So I've got a 13 next set and then finally done. All right, last set. Where's my remote? I got so many things to lose when I'm filming these vlogs. There it is. So obviously the gym that I go to allows filming. And uh, today they actually came up to me. Uh, the, the front desk chick came up to me and said that I have to sign a waiver uh, in order to allow to be continue to continue to be allowed to film, which uh, honestly I think is great. Basically, like you're signing a piece of paper that says, if you're going to film at the gym, don't be a fucking douche. Don't be obnoxious. Don't get in people's ways. Be respectful, which is all things that you should do because everyone should feel comfortable at the gym. Whether it's a bodybuilding gym, a powerlifting gym, um, gyms that like usually sim seem intimidating. Uh, it's good that it's like, obviously those are going to attract more bodybuilders, powerlifters, whatever type of gym it is. But I think it's good that you know, general population people feel comfortable going to those gyms because you're going to learn a lot more in a gym like that than some fucking generic commercial gym where the trainer has, you know, the trainer is a male and he looks like he's fucking 12 months pregnant. And all he knows about working out is what he learned taking a certification, which is probably next to nothing. Um... But yeah, when I, I mean, and even when I'm in there, there's a group of like, it was like six uh, young kids and they had two cameras on tripods between them. And I, I just noticed they had them like set up in the middle of a busy area. There's six of them. They're all yapping and, you know, kind of getting in the way. They're in a high traffic area. In my mind, I'm like, don't fucking ruin it for everyone. Like, so... For that reason, I think it's great that any, like, I feel like any gym that allows filming, like, 
they should acknowledge that with their members. Hey, if you're someone who films, these are the rules about filming. You can do it, but just don't be a fucking obnoxious douche. Actual douche. A lot of people call me a douche. Probably just because of how I look. There's a difference between looking like a douche and actually being a douche. <laughs> and it's it's how you uh, how you treat people. All right, so here we are back in the office. It's 11.15 p.m. Uh, so I'm still definitely struggling with sleep. The issue now is uh, I just, I'm getting to bed too late. I'm waking up late. Um, and then with my meal schedule, I end up, it's, it's just, it's just hard to get to bed early. Um, I'll figure it out though. But anyway, that was a, that was a pretty good day. Um, the, the meal prepping also really slowed me down. Um, so hopefully the fact that, you know, I cooked enough chicken and shrimp for the next few days, that should help me start getting to bed earlier. Um, so that's basically like the one issue I have to iron out, which is kind of always the case to be honest, but, um, but yeah, so that's it for episode number four. Hopefully these start ending up a little bit shorter cause I don't expect people to watch entire two hour long vlogs. Although, you know, I watch two, three hour long podcasts, but they end up being broken up between me watching them while I eat, while I do cardio, et cetera. But um, I do want these to be a bit shorter, so hopefully that uh, these last two end up shorter. I'm still editing episode three at the time of uh, time that I'm recording this, but yeah, so great day, great great uh, push session. Got all my steps done outside. Um, well, I'm three steps short right now, but that's I'll hit it for sure. But yeah, if you are interested in coaching, so you would like me to you like to work with me one on one. Um, so I can write your plan, make adjustments, and make sure that you reach your goals when it comes to fat loss, muscle building. Uh, the link for that is in the description along with uh, discounts for uh, my discount code for HD Muscle Supplements, BHAIL, for 10% off. Um, so make sure you guys like the video. Uh, comment for the algorithm, whether it's just a, just a quick comment or a suggestion on, on things you would like to see. Um, how you think the vlogs could be better, other videos you'd like, maybe outside of vlogs. Um, and then otherwise, if you, if you haven't, obviously subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we will see you on the next episode.